something that ought properly to be left to the states. Hustler and Judge Wilkinson argued that there is some new kind of category that this court ought to establish called the political public figure. That is a figure unknown in any other decision, and certainly not in this court, and I would surely argue against it, because this court has said that by becoming a public figure, a person does not abdicate his rights as a human being. And if libel will not protect someone who is subjected to this utterly, not dubious, but worthless kind of verbal assault, then the tort of the intentional infliction of emotional distress, which Virginia recognizes, is a tort which deserves support and endorsement in this case and in this court. This case is no threat to the media. It will be the rare case indeed where this kind of behavior will ever be replicated. But where it occurs, it deserves the condemnation which the jury gave it, which the Fourth Circuit found, and which I respectfully submit this court should affirm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grubman. The case is submitted. From December 2nd, 1987, in the U.S. Supreme Court, Chief Justice William Rehnquist accepting the case... Hustler Magazine and Larry Flint, publisher, petitioners, the Jerry Falwell respondent. And the question in this case, does the First Amendment's freedom of speech protection extend to the making of patently offensive statements about public figures, perhaps resulting in their suffering emotional distress? The Supreme Court's conclusion, yes. Here's the unanimous opinion of the court in favor of the petitioners, Hustler Magazine and Larry Flint, written and delivered by Chief Justice William Rehnquist, February 24th, 1988. In the third of this rather long series of cases, number 86 78 Hustler Magazine et al. versus Falwell. Uh, respondent Jerry Falwell, a nationally known minister and commentator on public affairs, sued petitioner Hustler Magazine and its publisher, petitioner Larry Flint, for the torts of libel and intentional infliction of emotional distress. After an ad parody featuring Falwell's name and picture was published in Hustler Magazine. This ad parody also contained a fictional interview with Falwell in which he allegedly describes a drunken and incestuous encounter with his mother in an outhouse. After a trial, the jury held for... A hustler on the libel claims, specifically finding that the ad parody could not reasonably be understood as describing actual facts about the about Fowell or actually events in which he participated. The jury found for Fowell on the intentional infliction of emotional distress claim, however, and awarded him both compensatory and punitive damages. The Court of Appeals affirmed this award, and we now reverse the judgment of the Court of Appeals. The respondent contends that the First Amendment does not prevent a public figure from recovering damages for speech that meets the requirement of the state law toward of intentional infliction of emotional distress. That is, speech that was intended to inflict emotional distress was outrageous and did in fact inflict serious emotional distress. We think, however, that in the context of public debate about public figures, the First Amendment prohibits the finding of tort liability solely on the basis of an intent to injure or to harm. The fact that the speech at issue is outrageous is not a sufficient basis to subject it to tort liability, for if you went ahead on this basis, it would allow jurors to impose liability on the basis of their tastes or views and perhaps on the basis of their dislike of a particular expression. We conclude that in order for a public figure or public official to recover for the intent, intentional infliction of emotional distress, you need to show additionally that the publication was made with actual malice, that is, with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. Here it's clear the respondent is a public figure, and therefore he may not recover on the basis that the Court of Appeals said he could. Justice White has filed an opinion concurring in the judgment. Justice Kennedy took no part. From February 24th, 1988, Chief Justice William Rehnquist with the court's unanimous opinion in favor of the <coughs> petitioners. In <coughs> Hustler Magazine and publisher Larry Flint, petitioners, the Jerry Falwell respondent, portrayed in the 1996 movie The People v. Larry Flint.
Our SCOTUS and the Cinema series continues next Saturday with the oral argument in the 1974 case, United States v. Richard Nixon, referenced in this 1976 movie. All the president.